So, Harriet Cabelli from Long Island, New York, uh, in terms of what what I am beyond a cancer diagnosis, right? Because we're a lot bigger than our diagnosis and our illness. And I actually kept that in mind during my treatment. Um, I'm a clinical social worker and I have a private practice, ironically working with people going through grief and loss um, and all types of critical life situations and triggers. Um, before this, I was also a social worker in the school system, working with the little people, the four-year-olds. I wrote a book a few years ago, there it is, Living Well Despite Adversity. So I've always been in this field with this theme in life. And then fast forward to March of 2022 is when I got my diagnosis of um, non-Hodgkin's large B-cell lymphoma. A few months before I actually got diagnosed, I was having stomach issues. Now, I think we all have weak links in our body. The stomach has always been my weak link. Like 20 years ago, I had ulcers and I've had reflux. So I've always had irritable bowel. So I've always had stuff in my gut. And, but I've always managed it and I don't do medicine. So I was always seeing a great integrative doctor and managed it. But it would flare up here and there. Anyway, so in the fall of 21, I went for an endoscopy. Everything seemed fine, typical, a little bit of gastritis. I was tested positive for H. pylori. But instead of going on the rigorous antibiotic routine, which is like 12 pills a day for like 10 days, uh, my integrative doctor knows me for 20 years, my gut, and said, you, you, you'll never tolerate that. I'm going to create a cocktail for you of natural things. And after a month of taking them, I went back for a repeat of the test for H. pylori, and it came back negative. So that was wonderful. I was still not feeling great. So I still had energy. I was taking my ballroom dancing classes. I was seeing clients. I was I was doing everything, but it still fell off. And I was losing some weight. And I can't afford to lose weight because I wasn't eating a lot. I wasn't, I didn't have much of an appetite, whatever. And my husband would say, maybe you should go to the emergency room. I don't want to go to the emergency room. Anyway, one day we were at Long Beach. On the boardwalk walking, I'm an avid walker. We hike, we walk. I'm an avid exerciser for years. And I couldn't walk. I said, I couldn't walk. I had to sit down after like two minutes. I said, this isn't me. Now, three days before that, I was doing my ballroom dancing, learning the tango. Came home and said, I probably am dehydrated. Maybe I should go to the hospital for some uh, fluids. So we went to the hospital in the city because I have a connection there. We went to Lenox Hill. And the ER doctor said, we need to run a CAT scan on your stomach if these are the symptoms. I said, you know, I had one a year ago. I, I did the CAT scan. And I'm not one to do extra stuff medically. But I did it. And it was taking a very long time for results. I said, uh-oh, something is not right. I'm saying instead of an hour, it was like three hours sitting there pacing. And she finally came out. And it was a different one than the original one. They had already changed shifts. And she said, you know, and I saw her face right away. She said, you know, I don't even know you. The other ER doctor at least knew you for 15 minutes. I'm a stranger and I'm gonna, I'm giving you very bad news. So I was like, oh my God. She said, you have a large mass growing inside you sitting on three organs. And I said, I was like a stone face. My husband broke down crying like a baby. And I, even now I get the chills. I was stone faced. And, I, and I, I, I didn't have any words. And I said, um, I don't even know what I said. But she said, we're going to admit you. We have to run more tests. Well, I thought to myself at that point, if it's truly sitting on three organs and it's really big and really fast growing, and I only have a few months to live. And I told my husband this at that time, 11 o'clock at night, I said, you're going to put me in hospice. I, I mean, this is like, this is like the worst news you could possibly get from a complete stranger. And I said, I came in for a, for a for hydration and 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 this is what it is. Um, anyway, so that's how I found out the initial. And then they brought me up to the room. It was it was midnight, completely dark, and I just laid there in bed. And I thought to my I kind of my kind of like my whole life ran through my brain. I said, okay, if this is God's wet, God's will, I really don't want to die yet. I also don't want to suffer. 
Um, but I've had a good life and I kind of went through all the stuff in my life and I said, I can't be bitter um, because I've had a lot of great stuff, but I would like longer. And anyway, so I don't really know how I got through the next few days until I actually got the real diagnosis six days later. Uh, they did biopsies. I apparently was, I didn't know I was yellow. They said, didn't you see that you were yellow? I said, no, I had two severely blocked um, liver bile ducts. So two days later, they went in, they biopsied, they put in two stents to open it up. I had no clue. Um, and then that was Sunday. I got the final diagnosis Saturday. So six days later, and I have no clue how it went through six days like that. Uh, doctor calls me up and said, I have the best news possible. Within the cancer world, what you have is called non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Um, which is very, very treatable. So if you had to have a cancer, this is one of the better ones. So I looked at it and said, oh, that week my verdict was changed. I went from thinking that this is it, sitting on three large organs, one of which is the pancreas, and we know what that means, um, to this. So I said, oh, I guess my verdict was changed and I, I felt better about it. And then shortly thereafter, um, I started uh, treatment. This, this person hooked me up with a, a doctor who specializes and is on the cutting edge of research of this type of lymphoma at Columbia. I, I didn't start with second and third opinions. And so that, that, that's kind of it in a nutshell, initial, how I got diagnosed. We're at Columbia Presbyterian getting our first round of chemo today, the start of a new life and a new beginning. So stay healthy, stay safe, and think positive. Bye. Say bye here. Yeah, so I, I was doing chemo. So it's called EPOC, the EPOC treatment for this. I had six rounds every three weeks. And it was it was intense because it was five days on chemo. So I did the first round in hospital. And then after that, my doctor encouraged me to do outpatient. She said, you're a good candidate. You're basically healthy. You're in good shape. I want you to try it. So I was scared to, I'll tell you in a second, I, I was scared to do it at home. Um, she said, if it doesn't work out, you'll do the next four in the hospital. You have nothing to lose. So I did. So what it is, is they hooked me up to a fanny pack. And for five days, I'm hooked up to this, to this chemo drip. And so it was in hospital to the big IV pole. But once I was home, it was a little fanny pack that I carried around 24 seven for five days. And, um, then I would go in two of the days of that week to change the bag, to get an X, the next one, to get hydration, to check my bloods. And then Friday at the end of the week, I went in to get unhooked. So it was every three weeks, that was my cycle. I said to the doctor, this may sound nutty, you know, in the scheme of things, but I like have this terrible fear of nausea and vomiting. Like you see all these movies with cancer patients with, and all they are is sitting by the toilet. And she said, I'm going to tell you something. Number one, this isn't one of those that is really, that will cause a lot of that. However, you're going to take the anti-nausea medicine always ahead of time, prophylactically. You're never going to wait to start to feel it. You're going to be ahead of the game. Even if it means you take it every day or three times a day, whatever it is, you're not going to wait. And I took her advice and <laughs> I know it sounds funny, but I never threw up once. My other big fear was, I am so sensitive and I am allergic and I don't do well with a lot of antibiotics. I have a very, like I said before, a very sensitive gut. Um, and I had to be on a lot of stuff and antifungal, antiviral, antibacterial and miracle of miracles. And I have a lot of miracles in my story. Miracle of miracles. My stomach was fine with all the antibiotics that I, well, with my whole regimen, I had to take every day including very high doses of steroids. Steroids I wasn't concerned with, but the antibiotics I was, and it was all fine. But my biggest fear and my biggest side effect for me, which was bad news, was weight loss. Like I said, I couldn't afford to lose more weight. I went down to 80 pounds. I lost over 20 pounds. Uh, and that was not even including the weight loss from before. So all I could think of was, my body's not going to survive it. It's, it's going to cave in and I'm going to die just from the treatment because how will my body survive three? By, in other words, by round four, I was down 
so low. And I said, and that's when my anxiety got really high. How am I get, how's my body? Just putting it as anything else. How is my body going to withstand more treatments? And, and, and it did. And I did a lot of self-talk and I was always out in nature when I had strength. Every week on a Sunday, my husband and I went to a nature park, even if we sat on the bench, walked a little. That's soothing to me. I was always watering my plants. I was really trying to input. I, 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 I have the, um, what shall I say? I teach and I work with clients with a lot of um, positive psychology concepts. I'm a student of it and, and that plus logotherapy, which is the therapy of meaning and purpose. So I was really trying to input a lot of the stuff that I work with clients on myself. So like little bits of joy and pleasure each day, get up, water your plants, um, you know, go outside, make sure. And I was sitting out on my deck most of the summer, even if I didn't feel well, I would just lay there on the lounge. So I tried very hard to cope um, in a way that was, you know, help, help, helpful to me. At the very beginning, I, uh, as a therapist, <laughs> People said to me, oh, you can join a support group or this. I said, no, I cannot. Be. And I lead support groups. I lead groups, women's groups and all kinds of stuff. I said, I can't be in a group and hear everyone else's stuff. I don't think that's, that was just my intuitive sense. I don't think that's going to help me. I don't want to be that. I have to go through this somehow my way. And maybe down the road, I will use it, but not, not right away. So I, I had in my mind this image of like a horse with blinders and I just like put one foot in front of the other and I just plowed through. I never went online to look. I did not want to hear side effects of medicines, that's for sure, because then I'd have every one of them. I didn't want to hear stories of this one or this one had ended up with a stem cell or this failed. I never Googled and looked up online. I'm telling you, I was like this. So I started putting down on these cards because A, I love pictures and B, I love quotes. And I just wanted to do something a little more creative. So I started doing these cards. So, <laughs> so, I put, so here's one for an example, right? Here's the horse with blinders. And I wrote on it, and then my husband was taking me around and made it. Um, like a horse with blinders, keeping on the straight path, putting one foot in front of the other. And then I would write in the back my intention. My intention is to allow the strength of the mountains to support and embrace me in coping with this process. So I would take some of these cards, and I've done tons through the cope, through the treatment, and then after the treatment. Because I really, first of all, I enjoyed the process of doing them. I love finding the pictures and what did they mean to me, and then writing in the back. But I have to say that I also did have a therapist who I was seeing, a new person, but very different, not the typical therapist. I found on one of my favorite blogs called Tiny Buddha, people write guest posts. I've submitted a lot also. And this woman wrote this guest post about three components, nature, creativity, and mindfulness. And I thought, and I was reading, I said, oh, this really resonates with his home. I called her and I, not I called her, I emailed her saying, I'm going to be starting treatment. I really want to engage in something individual, not group, not typical therapy. So we were, we started working together and she, to this day, I still work with her because, you know, after cancer treatment, you're on a forever healing journey. She is amazing. So it was a completely different way of dealing with adversity and anxiety and through the arts, as someone who works with people and their feelings. And I, not even consciously, I wasn't feeling as I was going through it. It was like my good friends would say, you know, you're never talking about how you feel. You're talking about all the road stuff and the concrete stuff. And I realized, and that's why I, I did this metaphor of the horse with blinders. I felt like part of my coping, I mean, when I look back is, I guess I didn't really, I shut down from the feeling just to get through it. it. It was just too, too much, I guess, to let myself feel. I mean, listen, after round four, when I had lost a lot of weight and I was terrified, the anxiety level was sky high. I mean, 
I reached out to a, a hospital social worker there just to have a couple of sessions to talk about it. Anxiety is future worry. Regret is past upset. Anxiety is future worry. The biggest thing I could say is you got to just take one day at a time. If I would start at, at the first round thinking, I'm never going to get through six rounds, forget it. I would have been a fancy case. But I, like, I would put a stop sign in my brain. And if I would start to say, how am I going to do it? I would stop myself and say, one, we're going to do one round. We're going to get through one round. That's all. What are we going to do? We're going to get through one round. When the sore is calm, the third week you feel better, you're going to go to this park and this park. And that's it. One. And that's how I really tried to do it. One round at a time. Because if I allowed myself to think, oh, my God, how am I going to get through it? Forget it. I, I would be crippled. Okay. Celebrate today. Today, as I ring this bell, it signals the close of one chapter and the start of another. I ring once for all I have endured. You're going to do better than that. <laughs> all right. At the end of my chemo. After I rang the bell. I love that. I, I rang the bell. I, I love that. That was such a great thing. Um, and thank God it was clear. And then I had one in March. And then I just had my recent one a few days ago. So I have to have them every six months for two years. But the anxiety, I know that's a new word, is, is high. And I try to understand and say, you know, it's interesting. We all know we're going to get something and die. I mean, none of us are here forever. So someone could say, you know, well, they could be diagnosed with something else in six months. Why does this feel so much scarier? Why, once you have a diagnosis, does it feel like you're forever with an ax over your head? And I haven't figured that one out yet, but it's, but it's there. Every time you feel, every time I have a stomach thing now, I had a, like a, an episode the last couple of weeks. I think, oh my God, is this it? Or, or my, my blood work was a little out of whack. Oh my God, is this it? So I haven't kept quite wrapped my head around how it's so much different than anyone else, just because they haven't had a diagnosis. We're all, we're all waiting our turn, so to speak. Nobody goes through unscathed. So, but I guess once you have it, it becomes more real that it could be, it could be a recurrence. When you get a good result like this, I, I, I would imagine everyone feels like this. You feel like a sense of renewal, like, huh. I got a six month reprieve, six months. Of, uh, it doesn't mean I can't go out and get hit by a bus, but in terms of kids, I have a six month renewal on life. Now, what am I doing? How am I going to pay this forward? But it, I, I just feel so compelled to like, what do you do with this good news? You don't just go back to life as it was. I've always lived with a very keen sense of uh, appreciation and enthusiasm. I mean, I've had a lot of other, I have a daughter with disability. She went through a critical illness for a year. I've had other challenges, believe me. And I've learned along the way other, other, a lot of, a lot of things about how to live life. So um, I just look at this and I say, this is another jumping point, another level. It's not like suddenly, oh, now I appreciate sunsets or now I appreciate my family. No, I always had this but the one thing i am doing now differently is more internal work with this therapist elizabeth that i am doing i feel like again visually i need to clean out the cobwebs in there so that more beauty of flowers can grow you know we hold a lot of stuff this resentment and anger and this and that and i'm working much more on my internal i'm going to call it landscape emotionally and psychologically. When you're going through it, it's gotta be one tiny step at a time to really not think of the long road because it is too overwhelming and anxiety provoking. That, you have to be very cognitively attuned to just you know, one step at a time. Um, the other thing is it's an opportunity to really go into ourselves to better ourselves as people. Not just to say, oh, I appreciate life more. Absolutely, 100%. For those who maybe haven't heard that before, and this is gonna give them this type of more gratitude and appreciation, that's great. But beyond that is, and it's not 
selfish. It's just really figuring and looking to say, let me let go of some of the old stuff. Let me forgive more. Let me be more self-compassionate. 